consignment of relocatable classrooms. Good evening or afternoon. Uh, my name is Renee Kamen, uh, school planning manager. I'm here to present the recommendations to the board regarding the relocatable placement for school year uh, 1920. The Howard County Public School System uses relocatable classrooms to address crowding and program needs throughout the system. This report represents an evaluation by staff using considerations of capacity, projected enrollment, current number of relocatable classrooms, and additional programs housed at each school. School planning collaborated with school facilities to determine the condition of current relocatables, school construction to determine the site accessibility and site restraints, as well as school administration to determine which schools are most impacted by programs and enrollment growth. Additionally, over the last year, uh, my staff and I have walked uh, through multiple schools with school-based administration to gain a first-hand knowledge of their daily usage as well as scheduling. Um, this recommendation is for the installation of 20 new single classroom units, as well as the demolition of 23 single classrooms and one modular unit that contains five classroom spaces. The primary criterion for recommending installation of relocatable classroom is to provide immediate relief from high capacity utilization. Projected capacity utilizations percentages for school year 1920 2020 are based on recently completed enrollment projections which will be used in the June 2019 feasibility study and the FY 2021 capital budget. We did survey all the principals um, to better understand each school's needs and concerns. Um, the principals all requested 68 relocatable classrooms, 38 individual ones, and four multi-modular units, uh, nine classrooms. Um, for each of those, and removal of 14. Um, a summary of the principal requests are in your attachment too. I wanna note that the, to cost, the cost to fulfill the request is approximately $8.6 million. Um, not all these requests can be accommodated based on our budgetary limitations. Um, the current Board of Educational Capital budget request is $3.2 million. Relocatable classrooms are being installed at 11 schools with several installations replacing existing units. Attachment one of your report lists all the recommended demolition and installation of classroom units. The estimated cost for the installation and demolition is $3,331,000. Um, this report does not recommend moving um, relocatables from one school to another. Um, a contract to purchase the relocatables will be brought to you at a future um, board meeting and action for this particular item will be held on March 28th. And I'll take any questions. Ms. Caternio. One of the um, modular units that we're destroying is fairly new. Um, I'm just wondering, um, is this the one at Swansfield that's getting? Um, the five classroom modular um, yeah. is at Swansfield. I believe the history of that modular is it was moved twice twice before, um, and this was its third home in, in its lifespan. And so why is it getting destroyed? Um, it's getting demolished um, because it's outlived its useful life. Is that typical since 2011? I mean, that's it's. Really um, this particular unit had also maintenance issues, is my oh, understanding right. as well. Okay. So it's a combination of the movements plus <laughs> we plus can say the M word. The, yeah, <laughs> plus maintenance okay. concerns. Is there because I know that the modular unit at Pointers, Fulton, I mean, also had the same kind of issues. Is there something that we're doing to help prevent this? Because that's a we spent well, I think eight hundred thousand dollars to buy this unit just in two thousand eleven, several hundred thousand dollars to move it, and now we're destroying it and it's maybe this isn't a question for you I'm sorry but it's no it's okay. just uh, this is a team effort the relocatable okay. uh, report good afternoon Scott Washington capital plan and construction okay. um, for the most part we're working for our building services department our school maintenance department um, and our IEQ staff of course to as they maintain the trailers and things like that um, I know that again as Ms. Kamen said one of the issues is how many times we actually move a trailer which is why Swansfield has some of the issues it's had 
Um, I think that the concern you had pretty much more is a item where our maintenance department is looking at that to make sure that we don't have those problems in the future. Yeah, because it seems like it's in summertime that they, they but anyway, that's a conversation for another time. Mm -hmm. um, the projections on some of these, we're already beyond the projection, like at this point in the school year for some of the schools like Cradle Rock, Bryantwood, not so much Bryant Woods, but Cradle Rock. I'm really concerned with the, um, they, they got 26 new students since the beginning of the school year. So they're already above the projections, what we're projecting for them. So I'm just concerned that we, I understand we're in a limited, we can only do so much, but um, certainly schools like Cradle Rock and Bryant Woods that have, are you know, older and don't have the flexibility of the space that some of our newer schools do. I'm wondering if we could, because I know Bryant Woods, the PTA, like they've really been advocating for um, another portable because they ju their school is so small compared so some to. Some of that is a consideration. I've been out to Bryant Woods several times and has spoken to the principal. Um, Bryant Woods has a specific problem and that's the site itself. Cool. So to put another relocatable on that site is rather difficult. Um, which is why we're replaced. That's why the recommendation is um, a component we're also looking at um, to is um, what's about to uh, the process with redistricting as well. So there is that component is with this particular recommendation. Okay. Doctor, are you through? I'm sorry, Ms. Katerni. Yeah, I'm through. For now. I might I, come I, back, but I was just yeah. trying to see. Thanks, Doctor Wu. So uh, thank you very much, both Renee and Scott, yes, sir. answering the questions. And I want to know what's the average lifetime and the average service time for the portables. Honestly, that varies. Um, I know that question has come up before. If you take a look at our inventory, you have some trailers that are young, as I do believe, of five or six years. Yeah, some trailers that are older, like 20 years plus. Um, it really varies on the condition of the trailer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, honestly speaking, um, but they can they can go anywhere from five to twenty five, sometimes plus years, up and on the trailer. So what makes that variance? Is it because different company provide the product or the same product from the same company? It's kind of hard to say. Um, I would have thought I could get back to you the answer of that because this is a question that's come before. It's 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 the, sometimes it's just the trailer. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's the components in the trailer and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, I would like to kind of talk more with my building maintenance staff and kind of get an answer back. Okay, on that would be great because sure. I, I I think my concern is we are spending two million dollars, more than two million dollars on the portables, and uh, we just use this definitely is a is a tool to really relieve the overcrowding it is. and uh, provide program ad and program for the school. At the same time, I wonder like in the longer term, for example, we talk about the uh, redistricting, mm -hmm. we talk about. Uh, opening new schools very soon. Is this really like, the way we can reduce the numbers or somehow just this is exactly the number we really need just for the next year? How about look five years? So we actually, um, if, our, our office mm -hmm. um, does look at least at two, possibly three years into mm -hmm. the future. Um, so this is the recommendation we're taking forward right now. Um, we have another list. Um, that we create of those that are on the watch mm -hmm. um, because we, we study the utilization, we study the staffing, we study the building usage itself mm -hmm. for the individual principals. And so these are the ones that we need for right now. Um, and then we have a list for the, the second tier that we will look at again and schedule meetings with the individual st staff of this, excuse me, the school-based administration, walk the building, see what's happening, seeing what's occurring, um, and maybe working with them in the interim mm -hmm. about adjusting usages in certain parts of their facility. And then again, watching the projection, um, seeing what the result is of that, um, what's going on in the school the whole year. And then that will pop up into the next, the second year. And I think that's really important because as Ms. Kamen stated, I think uh, the original request was for 68 trailers throughout the system. And we're at a number far less than that. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, once again, that's because once the staff goes out and talks to the schools, they try to look at ways to utilize the facility maybe more efficiently and things like that to kind of cut that down. Um, that is very important. I, and I think the other piece, again, is what you said before, and it's kind of go back to what something Ms. Catronio was saying, is that many of the units are to replace older units. So sometimes, in some cases, it's not the capacity, it's just the age of the unit and the condition where you're trying to replace with a unit just to make sure that, that we've had it with a new unit online. Okay, so, okay, I think I got my point. It's really just say, it's really needed next year. So at the yes. same time, it should be used 
in the next five years as well. Is that right? Yes. At this time, yes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Delman Small. Thank you for the information. So I asked a question and my email, as you can imagine, is a very populated, crowded place. I had asked a question as to the number of relocatables that are being used by outside entities. Can yes. you direct me? So that was, um, we sent that to you via the, the portable inventory that we had, and there is a use note on the end. So we only have two outside agencies that use our portables. Rec and Park is one, and the primary reason for that is because we reclaimed multiple spaces since 2015 interior to the building. And so Rec and Park uses several relocatables um, on site. The other is the Judy Center, which is an MSDE early childhood, and that is over at Cradle Rock. So they're the only two outside entities. Um, that use that we have placed portables for. Okay, so the ones for Reckon Park. Yes. Here's my concern. We obviously have, I know we'd prefer not to use them, but they are what they are. We have to use them. So how many are being, when they're being used by Reckon Park during the day, are they being utilized by our staff and our students or are they just sitting there not utilized? Um, for some of them, they actually have their early childhood education programs in the um, actual relocatable, um, and they're spread out through the county. I believe Veterans is used that way, um, and a couple of others. There are some instances, like at Gorman Crossing, they are, there's two relocatables that are in use for Rec and Park. One is for their daytime programming with their pre-K. Um, it's like a ready-to-kindergarten path. Um, and then the second one does remain empty. They primarily use that relocatable for um, afternoon programming for their aftercare. Um, we're actually talking with Howard County Rec and Park about their usage right now and seeing how we can co-share some of the spaces that um, they are not using during the day and uses that are easily removable. Um, because if we remove Howard County Rec and Parks completely off of our campuses, then we severely limit the ability of before and after care programs that are offered at the school and their licensing. And that is a benefit of the children that attend all of the schools in Howard County um, for before and after care. So we're trying to balance the need of the portables during the day and also the needs of the community for before and after care for their children um, when school's out of session. Okay, so when the Rec and Parks utilize the portables, do they, because the programs that they're running, mm -hmm. I understand how they're a benefit to the community, are they free or do people have to pay in order to utilize this program? So before and after care, there is a charge for before and after care and there is a charge, I believe, for their pre-K programs. I can get you that information. Okay. Um, they just released their registration, I think, for school year 1920, so I can get that for you. Okay, so you can probably anticipate what my next question is going to be, mm -hmm. which is do they pay us for the use of our facilities? Um, I would defer that question to Bruce Gist if he's here. Um, because I believe there is some type of arrangement of cost sharing, uh, and I don't know how much that is. Just stay. Oh. Um, we are currently in an agreement with uh, Recreation and Parks to pay a $300,000 annual fee for the full use of our facilities. So they pay us 300000 for the full use? That's correct. Okay. Is it? too much trouble, because I, I'm curious, what that cost would be if they had to pay the cost that, every, that we charge every other entity? Can you get that information? We, we can provide that probably. We can get the information. Okay, I'm just, curi I'm just curious as to what that would be. Okay, thank you. Okay, seeing no more questions, we thank you for your report. Thank you.